Yo, 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 people and patrons of the night, it is your boy BD, and we are back with another movie review. And the movie that I'm reviewing today is one that is extremely important. This is a famous horror movie slash slasher, slash slasher, that's a tongue twister from hell. This movie is super important, it was a box office success. This one is a very early slasher movie, so it's very important to the uh, genre. And this basically banks on the whole idea of summer because summer is a huge part of this movie. So there was a lot of teenagers flocking to watch it. They thought it was super fun. They had a great time and it ended up being super successful. And again, it was also building off the success of Halloween 1 by John Carpenter, which was also a smash hit. So if you can't tell what I'm talking about, you're dumb as fuck because it's in the title of the movie. I'm talking about Friday the 13th, 1980. Friday the 13th, 1980 is a summer camp slasher movie. Um, Again, a very early slasher movie. This one um, basically helped out the genre tremendously because due to its success, we got an entire franchise of Friday the 13th. I think there's like a shit ton of films. There's crossovers um, with other movie franchises. Yeah, this is very important, very monumental. And it's ironic because Jason is not even really in this movie. He doesn't pop up till I think the second movie. This is more so a murder mystery. And I'm assuming in the boardroom when they had to come up with the story idea, it essentially went like this. All right, people, listen here, listen here. Do you like slashers? All right, you, you seen Halloween one. Did you think that was good? And people are like, oh, oh, y- y- yes, sir, yes, sir. We like slashers. Uh, uh, you know, according to my notes, uh, I would smash Jamie Lee Curtis. Anyway, I like the movie. All right, people, listen here, listen here. You like the summer. You, you, you like summer? You, you, you like summer camps? Uh, uh, y- y- yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we went to summer camps growing up. Shut the fuck up, Bill. I'm talking right now. Do you like the summer? Summer camps? Of course you fucking do, you fucking hermit. You like the summer. You like going out. Now, do you like titties? Oh, 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 sir. Depends who it is. If it's Pamela Anderson, eat my heart out. You put your fucking cock back in your pants, all right? You like titties? Do you like hanky panky? All right, uh, I know that's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit gruesome to say. Uh, uh, let me, let me, let me keep it scientific for y'all. Do you like people fucking? And they're like, don't tell the wife, but I like fuck. She clearly ain't giving me enough. Shut the fuck up, Hank. Listen, we got a movie. It's a summer camp. You got titties. You got fucking, and it's a murder mystery. All right, people are getting fucking throat slit. People are getting axes through their fucking craniums. People are getting arrows through their fucking necks. Now that shit is like a bacon wrap sausage. You know this shit is bad for you, but it tastes so goddamn good. You know you gotta eat it. You know you wanna eat this shit. I'm talking about the food analogy. If you eat the fucking VHS tape, you're gonna fucking choke to death. You idiot, and you paid 20 bucks for that, all right? Don't, don't eat the VHS tape. Listen. This movie is going to blow everything out of the fucking water. This movie is going to be a box office success. We are going to ride John Carpenter's dick to that shit thrust us to the moon. This movie is going to make us big, people. And they're like, we like the sound of that. And then that's how you got Friday the 13th. I spoke personally to the producer of the movie. That is exactly what it told me. That is not at all something that I made up for this review. Anyway, we're here to talk about Friday the 13th. Uh, What do I think about this movie? This is a well-beloved movie. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of people have nostalgia for it. A lot of people probably love this one. I know some of you old-ass motherfuckers probably watched this shit when it first came out. I'm kidding. I love you. Um, This movie was probably something you saw when it came out. Some of y'all may have watched it with your families, with your friends, you know, on reruns. You know, you're probably born during the 90s or early 2000s, you saw it at that point. I've never seen this movie. I've never been a big slasher guy. I've never watched slashers. This is the first time I'm watching a lot of slasher movies. Uh, Better late than never. Um, But I know a lot of people have probably been fans of this franchise for a long time. And there is a certain impact that this movie has because without this movie, you wouldn't get the whole Friday the 13th franchise. And it's the fact that this movie was so successful that's a testament to it existing. I get that. I understand that. But compared to a lot of other slasher films that I've seen, probably even modern slashers, and, you know, people are going to say it's not fair to compare it to modern slashers, modern movies. 
my friend Michael over on Night of the Living Dude, um, he reviews a lot of horror movies. Me and him spoke briefly recently. Good friend of mine, an amazing guy. Please go subscribe to him and check out his videos. He has Friday the 13th movie reviews as well. Um, so I'm going to link his channel down below there. And speaking of that, there's also a, a guy named Stranger Grayson, who's also a good reviewer. Um, good guy as well. I'm going to review his channel down below. He also reviews a lot of horror movies and Friday the 13th is one of them. So Michael and I were talking and I basically told him that, you know, when I'm about to make this review, I watched the movie. Um, I thought it was kind of overhyped. And I was like, you know what? I, I don't want to be too harsh on it. I don't want to use modern, you know, movie standards and what we've got now to compare to what was made 40 years ago. And he made an interesting point. He made an interesting point that, you know, you don't got to be too worried about that. Just say how you feel about the movie and just, you know, be honest with yourself. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of timeless movies, older stuff, older movies, older books, older content and horror that's still timeless to this day. Goosebumps is a big thing. Goosebumps, me and him are big fans of that shit is timeless till this day with some of the stories. Haunted Mask is a timeless story. Welcome to Dead House is a timeless story. You know, stuff like the Haunted Mask 2 episode, stuff like Werewolf Fever Swamp episode. This stuff is still talked about till this day. Um, you have scary stories to tell in the dark. Me and him are both fans of that shit holds up till this day. The Creep Show movie, the very first Creep Show movie. You know, Stephen King, George Romero, Greg Nicotero involved in that one. That movie is timeless. That movie is still fired till this day. There's a lot of older stuff. Halloween, the first Halloween movie, the second Halloween movie, Halloween season of The Witch, even though that's divisive, these older movies still hold up till this day. So there's a lot of older stuff that has to them the level of quality, the level of care, the level of effort. Um, speaking of John Carpenter, John Carpenter is the thing. I can go on. There's a lot of timeless classic stuff in horror that still continues in its quality till this day. And even obviously that extends outside to other movie genres like action and pulp fiction and that stuff. Um, so I think it is fair for me to be a little bit harsh on it because again, there's stuff out there that's old and still has higher quality and is better than this. But even ignoring that standpoint, if I just talk about the two mainstream slashers that came before this movie, which was Black Christmas back in 1974 and Halloween 1 that came out four years later in 1978, they both beat this movie in certain regards. Um, and they're both better than this movie to me. Um, so I'm going to be honest in this review. If you're a big fan of it, if you love this movie out of nostalgia, do not take this to heart. You know, you can still love it. There's stuff that I'm very nostalgic for. I can understand if you like this movie. I can understand if you, you know, love it. I don't really understand why you love it, but I can understand if you saw this back in the day and now you're watching it, you freaking love it. It makes sense. Um, but I'm just going to be honest with how I feel about it. So let me get into first the general plot synopsis. Keep it pretty brief. Keep it pretty quick because this movie is easy to spoil. Um, and a lot of you have probably already seen this, but for those of you who have not seen it, I'm going to keep it spoiler free just to be fair to you. Um, and then I'm going to go into my thoughts, how I feel about it, um, some of the positives that I do have with it, and then the negatives, the problems that I have with it. Also, sorry for this chair creaking a lot. Uh, just remember that misery review that I did by Stephen King where this thing broke over there and I repaired it. So yeah, <laughs> this thing is on its last limb, but we're going to make it work. This is like Kai Sinat's chair when he's streaming. That chair is fucking on its last heel. This thing is on its last heel, quite literally. Uh, and my fat ass cannot keep eating the way I do because this shit will fucking explode the next video. Let's get into the movie review. Friday the 13th is about um, basically a prologue back in, I think, 1958, where these camp counselors were basically having some fun time, enjoying summer camp. They're doing some campfire tunes. You know, they're gathered around with people, strumming away the guitar, singing away some tunes by a campfire. Oh, not campfire. They're inside. So it's like a, it's like a fire. But you get my point. It's in a camp setting, so campfire. Uh, they're doing a little bit of sing-along, having a good time. And then you get this first-person perspective, uh, again, much like, um, Black Christmas, Halloween one, where there's this unknown entity stalking and watching them, and you don't know who it is. It's a mysterious figure. Um, and then these two camp counselors, a boy and a girl, uh, they head up to, I think, the attic, the upper space of this uh, summer camp area. And as they head up there, um, they basically start getting some hanky-panky on, um, some hubbada hubbada, some whoopada whoopada, or as the scientific term is, fucking they start fucking and there's somebody watching from a dark corner and you don't know who it is again being very ominous and then they both get murdered they both get stabbed to death you get a first person perspective of them getting stabbed uh i'm sure oj simpson loves this movie i can say that because he's dead uh but you know the glove didn't fit he probably loves that scene 
Uh, so he stabs him to death. Um, or not he. I said <laughs> Simpsons. Simpsons ghost is gonna come back and haunt this fucking this room, bro. I'm gonna see him come out. I'm gonna hear a glove snap, and then it's the end of me. It's game over after that. Um, basically, this entity kills the both of them. Murders happen at this summer camp, and then it gets shut down, obviously, because there was a homicide case there. It's been shut down for a long time. Now you cut forward to 1980. It's been uh, basically almost like close to, not close to, but it's been you know over 20 years um, that's passed. And now you get into the perspective of these new camp counselors. There are these new summer camp counselors, these group of teenagers ready to have a fun time, drink, have sex, a bunch of stuff, your classic stuff involving a summer camp. But they basically are repairing the place. They're repairing the cabins. They're setting up the signs. They're trying to revive this camp because, again, it's been over two decades since it's been alive and used due to the homicides that happened here. So now they're trying to bring it back to its former glory and make it a fun place again because I think they have some nostalgia for it. They want to enjoy it. So that's kind of the big thing that they're going for. And as this is happening, you get introduced to a character named Annie. Now, I believe Annie is her name. A lot of the characters in this movie are fucking side fodder. You gotta bear with me, but I think it's Annie. She's kind of hitchhiking over to this town. Um, she goes to this bar area and she asks if she wants to be taken to Camp Crystal Lake. And as soon as they hear, you know, all the people in the bar, they're like these older folk, town folk. They hear that she wants to go to Camp Crystal Lake and they're like weirded out. They don't know why she wants to go there. Um, you know, they're like, you don't want to go there. They call that place Camp Blood because of the blood that was shed there. There was some murders. It's a horrible, cursed place. You do not want to go there. And they warn her, you know, vehemently. And they kind of side-eye her. They don't know what this, you know, innocent little girl wants to go there for. And why she hasn't heard of the stories. But she's not familiar with the area. Or maybe she just heard about Camp Crystal Lake by some of her friends. So she wants to head there. So eventually one of the truck drivers does decide to drop her off. He doesn't take her directly to the camp because he's afraid of it. He's very, they're very superstitious people over in this small over town. And... He drops her off, he lets her walk over there, and she has to basically hitchhike the rest of the way. Um, and that becomes its own little side plot line. And again, as she's trying to hitchhike over there, you got these summer camp counselors who are trying to uh, basically kind of get this place back to its former glory. You see them having a fun time. They're jumping in Camp Crystal Lake, partying with each other, drinking, you know, again, having sex, having a good time. 1980 fun, you know? Classic fun before technology was a thing. You know, you just enjoy the great outdoors, have a good time. Um, I wish we could go back to that in some regard, but I couldn't even make videos if we didn't have this existing. So there you go. Um, but then some murders start happening, of course. This, this won't be a slasher without some murders. Um, people start getting killed by this mysterious figure. Um, Annie, I can spoil it because she's not that part of a character. Annie gets killed as she's hitchhiking. This figure that ends up uh, basically not letting her out of the doors. They pass by, cramp, kissed her. Fucking, I had a stroke there. Jesus Christ. Camp Crystal Lake. Um, you know, they don't let her out. Classic hitchhiker, dangerous stranger. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. From John Tron. <laughs> bad touch. Bad. You know, that kind of danger going on. Um, they don't let her out of the car. And she eventually gets her way out. She jumps out. They start, they start chasing her. And then she gets her throat slit. And the throat slit looks funny because it's like this gray patch of skin that clearly was filled up with liquid that they cut open and it bleeds out. It's whatever. It's okay. Um, the kill scene is only like half a second. You, know, but you would blink your eye and miss the knife going through her neck and slitting it. So it, it, it's almost an off-screen kill. It's like this small pubic hair away from being an off-screen kill. Um, so yeah. And then and you'll see that's a common theme in this movie. So again, people start getting killed. There's a lot of body count. There's a big body count in this movie. And they have to figure out how to stop all of this. And that's essentially the movie. I don't want to go any further because it's going to result in spoilers. I want you to watch the film. I want you to enjoy it. It's a classic summertime film. I, I would still recommend it to go watch it, even if I'm not the biggest fan. But it's still a, a fun enough movie. It's a fun enough time if you just, I don't know, get wasted, have some snacks, spend some time with your family, whatever it may be. You know, whatever you do to have fun. So, uh, how do I feel about this movie? The positives. Camp Crystal Lake is a great setting for the movie. It's very fun, good summertime feel. I enjoy it. Um, you get some nice aesthetic setting shots. Specifically, I think uh, with Kevin Bacon and his girl. That's right. Kevin Bacon is in this movie. I think it might have been one of his early, if not his first roles, first big roles, I guess. Um, 
I don't remember his character's name. I think it may have been Jack or something. But Kevin Bacon's in the movie. Him and his girl are about to go and, and fuck by this cabin. Um, sneak up. Oh my god. I'm about to sneeze. Hold up. Ah, uh, the hanky panky fever is getting to me. Jesus. They they're about to go sneak out and you know go have a good time. And then you get this great aesthetic setting shot of the lake. You know this storm, dark clouds, trays, uh, trees swaying, and then obviously the rippling waves on the lake. Very good setting. I love the summer camp setting. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I've been to summer camps, obviously, similar settings to this. Um, and it, it's fun. It's a, it's a fun place. It's a fun setting. A nice place. You're far away from people, far away from society, just out in nature. And it often makes a very good setting for horror. So I have to, I have to compliment it there. Camp Crystal Lake is a fun horror setting. I can see why people like it. The main characters, even though they are fodder, they're not really important at all. They're decent. They're good. They're they're fun enough time. I don't really have a problem with any of them. I think they're the typical, you know, teenager trying to have a good time during the summer characters and slashers. Very basic bone. <coughs> Very basic bone. And the main character's name is Alice. Um, she's all right. She's an okay main character. I think Annie, the hitchhiker, would have made for a more compelling main character. I liked her joyous personality. I thought she would have been a pretty good fit for the, a main character in this movie. But Alice is fine. She's good. Um, not really any standout performance or role. They're just a means to an end. The characters in the story are means to an end. But they're fun enough if you look past that. Um, and there's a scene at the end of this movie, which is arguably the best part of this entire movie. Um, it's an infamous jump scare scene, uh, an infamous twist involving a certain character. And uh, it's fantastic. It's really well done. The way it's shot, it's almost like a punchline to a joke. It's this long, long, long silence. And then this absurd jump scare scene, attack scene. Um, really great, really good. It's all the way at the very end of the movie, so it's more so set up for the next film. Not really encompassing anything involving this movie. That plot line, more of that stuff would have been better to have throughout this movie. Would have raised the score for me. But again, it's great great scene again it's like a punchline to a joke you got this absurd silence you got this very happy song playing in the scene and then all of a sudden bah! you know it, it, it's more than just bah! as an attack scene but you get my point um those are all good and there is a kill scene in this movie now a lot of the kills are off screen a lot of the kills if they are shown last half a second there's a kill scene involving an arrow and a bed that a lot of you may remember that scene was good. Why? Because it was shown for longer than every other kill scene. And the, and, and the arrow going through the neck and the, the person bleeding out. That was brutal, dude. I did like that. Again, it was a simple kill. Short to the point, but well done. I like it. And there was one creepy scene in this movie that did get to me. And that was when one of the girls, after they're playing strip monopoly, goes back to the women's bathroom to go like wash her hands and kind of get ready um, for bed or whatever. And as she's there, you see this scene of, you know, these dark showers in the bathroom. And there's this pale white hand that pulls, I think, the shower curtain closed. And just that scene of this dark, dingy women's bathroom, of a dark curtain, this ominous blackness behind the curtain. You can see it through, like, the, whatever, five, four-inch slit. And then just this pale hand, fingers curling around and pulling it shut. That was very simple, basic, but it was creepy and to the point, and I like that. Now, positives are done. Let's get into the rest of this movie. This movie, to me, is overrated. It is a mid-movie. Now, to be fair, a lot of my fellow reviewers think it's decent. It's not as good as people think it is. Again, there's going to be diehard fans who are very nostalgic about the movie that love it. I don't feel that way. This movie is very boring. It's... Not a lot going on. It's a lot of off-screen kills. A lot of the kills are off-screen. And this movie has a higher body count than Halloween 1. It has a higher body count than, you know, Black Christmas. But it, it, it falls in the middle. It falls short of what it needs to be. Halloween 1 was effective because Michael Myers is a very intimidating presence. He's got this aura to him. When he's killing, you see him do the kills. He's got this presence, this you cannot fuck with this killer presence. Um, he doesn't give a shit. He's not scared of anybody. Very imposing figure. And then when Halloween 2 came out, you know, a couple, uh, one year after this movie, Friday the 13th, this Halloween 1, Halloween 2 came out in, uh, I think, 1981. That shit blows this movie out of the water. That shit versus this movie, Friday the 13th, is like Rock Lee using the Eight Gates versus Gara and Naruto. That fucking... <laughs> Wow. 
ding, 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 ding. That shit was beating its ass. The Halloween 2 beats this movie's ass. That shit blows this shit out of the water. Halloween 2 gives Michael Myers an increased presence. If Halloween 1 gave him that presence, Halloween 2 shoots his presence through the roof. That motherfucker is a real badass in that movie. But even Halloween 1, he's got that intimidating presence. You trust him as a killer. You think that he's scary. You tr you know, you, you buy into the fact that this guy is intimidating. And Black Christmas, a lot of the kills in that movie are off screen, but it's much more creepy, much more eerie of a movie. The idea of a killer breaking into this college sorority house, hiding in the rooms, watching you. The breathing scenes, there's a lot of creepy breathing scenes. The climax is great where it's the eyeball behind the door that still freaks me out till this day chasing him into the basement and then the very twist ending that is quite creepy um and on top of that again it's more atmospheric it's got a it's got a better creep me atmosphere to the movie while as friday the 13th falls in the middle you got a lot of off-screen kills you don't got that badass killer presence those that on-screen gore and violence but then it's nowhere near as creepy as black christmas so this is kind of like a measuring stick of a movie it's a real basic movie i would give this movie a seven out of ten it's about as average as oak as decent average you know standard slasher movie as you can get this is a measuring stick for my future slasher movies if i need to compare how good other slashers are or how bad other slashers are i probably compare them to friday the 13th 1980 because this movie's so basic there's, there's not really much going on there's a lot of scenes of just people doing stuff like again playing strip monopoly having a good time um fucking you know that that's expected but you know then there's scenes of alice like making coffee and just sleeping and napping and stuff like that it's like there's not enough on-screen action or gore and then the movie's not creepy enough to justify this amazing score that i would give it it's not a great movie it's not even really a good movie to me it's just falling in the middle it's a basic movie and then that's okay you know it's just it's just kind of sort of a man mundane movie but my big kind of rant or not even a big rant but the killer in this movie. I'm not going to talk about who the killer is. Very easy to spoil. The killer has a good motive. They have a good background. They have a good performance by the actor or actress who plays them. You know, actor or actress. Could be anybody. Um, so, they, they have that good stuff. But dude, when I found out who the killer was and I saw them in that climax scene. There's a climax action scene in the movie where the killer is interacting with one of the characters. That character is trying to run away and fight for their life against the killer. And dude, it's not intimidating of a killer. It's not Halloween 1 where you've got this Michael Myers almost borderline demonic monstrous presence walking around. Demonic monstrous presence in the form of serial killer that motherfucker himothy or black christmas where you got this creepy a stranger calls the babysitter urban legend type of story where the killer is inside the dark shadows of your room and house watching you calling you i'm gonna kill every single one of you i'm upstairs check your bedroom that kind of stuff no it's just you don't even know who it is you get these kill scenes that are all off screen involving arrows and axes and knives and then you see the killer and you're like what that's who was killing everybody i get it they were catching a lot of these kids off guard sneaking around like some fucking ninja but when you got these kill scenes that make the person look like a goddamn john wick character killing people with i thought they were about to start pulling out the pencils start pulling out the horses start pulling out a bunch of different odd objects to kill people with they're racking up body counts like a john wick assassin and then you see the killer and you're like that's the killer and then you get into this climax action scene where I swear to God, the killer is getting slapped around like it's the fucking Three Stooges. They're getting smacked the fuck up by frying pans and fucking cereal boxes. I don't know. At this point, I was expecting a fucking composition notebook to slap the killer and knock him silly like it was a fucking teacher out of India. I mean, literally, there's scenes in this movie. I'm not even lying to y'all. There's literally scenes in this movie where the fucking killer will be trying to take out one of the characters, one of the, I'm not going to say who the character is, but one of the characters. And then literally the character will take a frying pan or a book or whatever is around him and just go, yeah. And the killer will go, ooh. And then they start chasing after him. And then the character will grab like a fucking pillow and smack him again. And then the killer will go, ah. Fallen and 
that's who the killer is. That's what the killer is doing the entire movie, y'all. I swear to God. That's not intimidating. And that doesn't do much for me. But that aside, this movie's fun. It's fun enough. You can watch it on a rewatch. You can have some nostalgic times with your friends. It's a good summertime movie, but it's not a great movie. And in fact, I wouldn't say it's a good movie. Maybe I can bind to some arguments, but I don't think it's that good of a movie. This is a basic slasher movie, very standard. I'm much more excited to watch some of the future um, installments within the franchise. But this one, it's all right. It's okay. 7 out of 10 for Friday the 13th, 1980. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We are very close to 300 subscribers, people. If we could hit that, that would be amazing. Um, and make sure to like and comment down below. Let me know your thoughts about uh, Friday the 13th, 1980. Do you love this movie? Do you not like this movie? Do you hate it? Do you enjoy it? Let me know your thoughts. How do you feel about it? Where does it rank amongst the Friday the 13th franchise? Let me know some of your thoughts about the franchise as a whole. And uh, yeah, that's all I have for today. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, deuces. By the way, even that ending jump scare scene at the movie, that was played up as like a, a dream sequence. I heard it's explained in the second movie, so really looking forward to that second movie. But yeah, deuces people. Go outside, enjoy the summer.